In this video, I'm going to look at the geometry of a curve uh, in the neighborhood of, of three closely spaced points as determined by a circle through those, a, a, a circle of curvature, a circle through those three points. Uh, this is the curve, this is, represents my curve in space, and the parameter is going to be distance measured from a fixed point on the curve, and t is the tangent to the curve at any point. Now I note that t is the RDS and its magnitude is 1. So t is, a, is our first unit normal vector tangent to the curve. Now uh, from the, the vector from 1 to 2 is the tangent at p times ds approximately, and it gets more accurate as you get smaller for ds. And from point, this, the, the vector from point 2 to 3 is t1, ds1, where t1 is the tangent at point 2. So that, that locates our, our three points with respect to the original point p. Now, uh, the tangents t and t1 define a plane in space. And uh, if I take, if I put t1 and t, if I lay, lay out t and t1 here, then t1 minus t is a vector in the plane determined by t and t1, and it's also, as the distances get smaller, it's also perpendicular to t. So t1 minus t is a vector in the plane of t and t1, and it's perpendicular to, to the tangent. Now 1, 2, and 3 are in the plane determined by t and t1. It should be obvious from what I've just said. And uh, since 1, 2, and 3 are in a, one, the, the pl 1, 2, and 3 in a plane through those points determine a unique circle through those uh, points 1, 2, and 3. That, that's basically the, the geometry of the whole discussion. That, that, everything follows from there. If you don't understand this, then the, the usual uh, combination of definitions and formulas really doesn't, for me, never really fit together. Okay, now, uh, I can write T1 as T plus dt ds ds, so that T1 minus T is equal to T prime. T1 minus T is perpendicular to T, so I can define a unit vector n as T prime over the magnitude of T prime, and that is perpendicular to the curve and in the plane uh, through the three points, which determines the osculating circle. Uh, now, um, we define a, a third vector, b equal t cross n, purely as a definition. Now, I, I preferred n cross t because n cross t would put b pointing out. Then I had no problem finding different combinations of n, b, and t. But uh, that's the way I originally did it, but then I found all my signs were different from what, what the conventions were, from what this formula is on the net. On the, uh, on the web work. So I finally read there, I said, the heck, I conform, conform to the usual, conform to the crowd. <laughs> and I define B as T cross N, which makes B, instead of coming out like that, uh, T cross N is a vector pointing into the plane rather than out of the plane, osculating plane. And if, from that, you can just read off from here that T is equal to n cross b, and to see that you have to get in back of the plane and, and turn uh, n into b, and the right hand screw rule tells you that t is out, and then n is equal to b cross t, and again, uh, to do that I have to, I have to imagine myself on, 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 in, in the back on this side, then uh, b, uh, let's, uh, yes, then, then B cross T will be in the direction of... And you, you have to see it yourself. Think about it yourself. Right, and, and now, with those different... With, with those... With, with, with those... Uh, with the three T and B frame and the definition, we now come to the, the first thing, which is the radius of curvature rho. Rho is the radius of this osculating circle, which is what it's called. And 
r is equal to minus rho. And here's where the, the, the signs really become important. If, if you don't pay attention, you, you just get lost in the sign. Rho is equal to r is equal r, the vector from the center to, of the circle. The point of tangency is r, n points away from point of tangency. So r is equal to minus rho n, and dr is equal to minus rho dn. Uh, that, that's not 100% obvious. I just note down here that if, if r is the location of the, the, the point, tangent point, then r is equal to a, where a is the location of the center of the osculating circle, plus r. Then dr is equal to d cap r, because uh, for motion on the circle, we're assuming that a doesn't move when we're looking at the three geometry of those three close points on this circle. So uh, we have now r equal minus rho n, so that dr is minus rho dn. And if I divide both sides by ds, I get uh, dr ds, which is t. Uh, dr ds, oh, yeah, I get dr ds equal minus rho dn ds. So t is equal to minus rho, and dn ds is n prime. Now, if I multiply both of this equation by both sides, on the left by b cross t, and you have to, unfortunately, there's no reason why that's obvious. It's just, it's just what you do to get the formula for curvature. It's a perfect, nothing wrong with it, you have to think of it. All right, so if I multiply both sides of this by b cross t, b cross t is equal to n, and I have b cross n prime, and does it, anytime you have to, find some expression like this. You're always using the relation, this relation or one of these three relations to get derivatives in terms of other derivatives. So we have that t is equal to n cross b, so that t prime is equal to n prime cross b plus n cross b prime. Now, on the, on the circle, on the osculating circle, we're just working, looking at uh, the osculating circle and uh, B prime now is constant for the osculating, for a particular osculating circle and, and incremental motion on it. So B prime is zero because B is constant for this particular osculating circle from which T prime, N prime cross B, all right, so N prime cross B is T prime, and, uh, and, N prime is t prime. Oh, so that b b cross n prime would be, would be minus t prime. So that b cross t, which is n, is equal to minus rho times minus t prime, or n equal rho t prime. Or if you use the definition of the radius of curvature, that curvature by definition kappa is one over the radius of curvature. Then t prime is equal to k n, which is our first for a Frenet Serre formula. All right, now we're going to look at the torsion. Torsion is another definition. By definition, torsion is the magnitude of uh, the absolute value of B prime, rate of change of B with respect to S, with a minus sign in front of it. And the minus just implies clockwise rotation in the plus S direction. And I'll, maybe I'll look at that in a moment after I go through this. Now, to, to get this to get what what b prime is or what tau is, we, we start by, again, the same principle. We start with b equal t cross n. Then b prime is t prime cross n plus t cross n prime. Or uh, t cross n prime, I note that uh, t prime is from here, t prime is the absolute value of t prime times n, so that n cross n is 0. And that leaves us with b prime is equal to t cross n prime. All right. Now, now we're in good shape. Now, the hardest part is over. From that, uh, we have b prime is equal to t cross n prime. Then we note that b prime dot b is equal to 0, because b dot b is a constant. If you differentiate that, uh, with respect to s, you get b prime dot b equals zero. And uh, 
We also have that b prime dot t is equal to zero because uh, b prime dot t, because t cross n prime dot t is the volume determined by the three vectors t, n, and t, which is zero. That's, I, I'm pulling some uh, vector calculus on you here. All right, so, so that we have, we have final, b prime is equal to t cross n prime in the n direction, so that b prime is equal to the comp t cross n prime dot n, the component of t cross n prime dot n times n. And that's b prime is equal to minus tau n. Uh, that which is one of the Fresnes array formulas which I've outlined there. Now, uh, I, 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 uh, just because other forms, are, uh, you, you can come across other forms online or in textbooks, uh, to put it in those forms, I note that n is equal to, from here, n is equal to t prime over kappa, which means that n prime is equal to t double prime over kappa, so that uh, substituting in here, I get tau is equal to minus t, is the absolute value, minus the absolute value, t dot d prime cross t double prime, which is some interchanges in, in, in the order here, which only changes the sign, divided by, uh, uh, oh, right, after the substitution, divided by kappa squared. Now, uh, that's one form that I've come across. Then another form, if you note that t prime is equal to kappa times n, and if you take the dot product of each side with itself, you get t prime dot d prime is equal to kappa n squared n dot n. So t prime, which is 1, so t prime dot t prime is kappa squared, which is another form for the, uh, for, 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 the uh, uh, for the torsion formula, for, for tau, for, for the for torsion tau. Finally, after all of that, the, the, the final formula is, is rather easily easy. And again, we start with, and it, it, uh, with one of these three formulas: b uh, n t equal n cross b n equal b cross t, and t, and b is equal to t cross n. By, by definition, there they all are. All right. So now we have n equal b cross t. Then n prime is equal to b prime cross t taking the derivative, n prime is b cross prime cross t plus b cross t prime, where now n prime is equal to uh, b prime, we have is minus tau n. So n prime is minus tau n cross uh, b cross t prime, and t prime is kappa n. So that n prime is equal to tau b minus kappa minus kappa t, which is, is, is the standard third Fresnes array formula. Finally, I note that if, if, if you can find the distance as a function of time, then you can put all, all the formulas in terms of the time parameter uh, by noting that dt ds is equal to dt dt times dt ds or dt ds or dt dt over ds dt. It's just a mention. I'm not going to... That, 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 those kinds of formula manipulation are all over the, the web. I, I'm not going to deal with that. No. So that, so that, that, that finishes the uh, talk. Thank you.